the Department of Electrical, Computer and Telecommunication Engineering is one of the five departments in the Faculty of Engineering and Technology. The department is running two undergraduate programs, namely Bachelor's Degree in Electrical and Electronics Engineering and Bachelor's Degree in Computer and Telecommunication Engineering. With a vision to be a world-class center of excellence for engineering and technology education and research seamlessly integrating research and education to produce highly skilled professionals. Uh, the department has uh, two programs running right now. Uh, we have the electrical electronics program and we also have the computer and telecommunication engineering. In both two programs, we have um, the undergraduate, uh, the masters, and the PhD, which the masters and the PhD constitute the, post, uh, the postgraduate uh, uh, level. In fact, um, from the survey that has been uh, done last year, um, our students who actually study electrical electronics and computer and telecommunication happen to be the leading students or leading um, staff in some of the companies which have employed them, like Mascom, Orange, BTC. So our programs, like let's say where you have uh, computer and telecommunication, we, it tries as much as possible to cover both the computer engineering aspect and also the telecommunication engineering aspect. In fact, our students from year one to year three, they do the same models. It's at year four where we have electrical electronics, computer and telecommunication that we try to separate the two programs. And where we have now computer and telecommunication, they do the same models up to year four. At year five, they now have options. Now, if I want to become a computer engineer, then I cannot have option for computer engineer, or if I want to become a telecommunication engineer, I have option for telecommunication engineer. But the, 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 the degree we are going to offer you is computer and telecommunication. That is to say that you can, you can work in computer engineering related firm, you can work in telecommunication uh, engineering related firm. The department offers experimental and practical lessons to get industry-ready students. These students have to familiarize with global or international manufacturing standards. So here we are in the electrical power systems and machines lab. So in this lab we have so many things that our students have to do before they can graduate. Here I have a piece called the stator. It's, it's one of the pieces that make up a motor. So here inside you can see that we have some coils. This is how a motor is made. You can see there are gaps which are called stator slots. So all these coils are filled into according to the design and specifications of, of a motor. So here we have a complete one which has been coiled, wired, and this is where we started. So it's still coming and eventually to look like this. And again we have some this is where we will use some machines to, to which is called a dissectable machines. This is the one we use for coiling, for inserting these coils or for making sure that we have the right number of wires in per, per coil because they have to be uh, the specified number. We don't just coil and put in, right? So we believe by the end of their program, they will be able to understand the characteristics of a motor and the behavior. They should be able to tell a properly behaving motor and a faulty motor and how it should be uh, repaired, how it can be repaired. Our, these are the pieces of equipment that you will find in the industry. These are lab size equipment, but they have the same characteristics as the one you find in the industry. For example, here we have a voltmeter. This is a machine that is used to measure the level of voltage. It should be able to tell you whether the, your, the BPC is supplying us with over voltage or under voltage by just looking at, 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 at this voltmeter. You know, in Botswana we have 230 volts. So if, if, if for example, they are measuring 250, that's where we say it's over voltage. Or if they measure something less than 200 volts, then that is under voltage. So our engineers will be able to tell if they are supplying us what you call clean power or noisy power, I don't know how to put it, but it should be, the quality has to be like 100%. The Faculty of Engineering and Technology
technology continues to provide globally competitive and high quality education based on a theoretical, experimental and ethical foundation and enhanced by opportunities for participating in research, industrial internships and interdisciplinary studies, thus producing entrepreneurial and employment-ready graduates with globally relevant skills. We supervise students because students will be taught theory in class, so they have to come to the lab and then do the experiments, the hands-on, hands-on experiments. And we assist them with the with the building up of circuits and the design of circuits. Uh, currently, like where I am now, this circuit is a it's an RC circuit. We prepare in advance, like, like as we speak now, the, they are on vacations, right? So what do we do now as technicians? We prepare in advance so that when they come, we we'll be. More, we'll be more comfortable with the experiments because we have done them before they can do them. We have to be in advance of them. Like uh, this circuit here is an RC circuit. Yeah, I know they are going to be covering the RC circuit in views. So in views, or rather, not necessarily in views, students, they, they tend to understand when they see than when they hear. So they will see and then they will do the circuit themselves so that they can understand the, the story they were taught in class. Advances in engineering and technology have led to dramatic improvements in the standards of living of humans over time. Here are some of the technologically advanced projects that students at Buist are working on to improve the standards of living. Uh, this is our project. Uh, the, this is a, a monitoring device, you know, a monitor at temperature and humidity for like for greenhouses, incubators, and uh, any environment you know to like look at monitor to to keep to, to keep those things temperature or humidity in specific locations. Uh, as you can see, I have one actually where I'm going. the project here. He, like what we are trying to do, we are trying to monitor the temperature inside this model here. The model is more, more like a greenhouse. So right now the temperature is really high. We are keeping it between 28 degrees in the And it's just there. Like if it tries to drop beyond 28, uh, we, the, the system will heat automatically. If it tries to go beyond the heat, the system will heat automatically. So that's what we are doing. Like, so the only concept is you know, the modi green house in the modi incubator. So also the modi cold house in the monitoring temperature. Kena upelo take iso kidrama kama aboraro and telecom and computer engineering more abuse. So, center is there. I can come room here. Keep it on black room. Keep what we call a printed circuit board. Uh, what you get is something like this at the final, and then with a go drilling machine. What you do is, I go now let it part that thing. You go now drill that thing. So. First, you. You have to configure the user of of this uh, smart meter. Yeah, the first number to call this system is the one which is going to interact with the meter all along. Yeah, as you can see, it's, the meter is waiting for a call. Yeah. Yeah. This is the GSM number which we will be calling. This is the number for, for this SIM card here. So we are calling it. Uh, after calling it, it yeah. should send us an SMS of which we ought to receive Cindy in a few SMS. seconds. Um, it will be displayed yeah. here. Here is the SMS received. It shows that the number is configured here. So this is our, our main interface. We have start and recharge. When you want to recharge, you can scroll down to recharge. Oh. Then here, 
to reach her, you, you will be entering the number from the, the shop. We have coded our own numbers here so we can, that we can demonstrate with them. He's recharging with 500 pula. Okay. Yeah. As you can see, the, our recharge amount has changed. There's the interface. It shows the units that has been used and the cost, the, the, the amount remaining. So you can control this system use remotely using your cell phone wherever you are, using the number that you have configured at the beginning when you start the, the whole system. Yeah. Okay. Right now I'll be trying to uh, put uh, load 2 on with the letter C here displayed here. So I'll be sending the uh, message to the GSM. Uh, okay, the message is received. The, load our load, the second load is being switched on. We can also switch a uh, load, the, the last load. Uh, using uh, G. G, okay. Here's letter G. We are sending an SMS to the GSM. This load should be. It's it's been lit. We can even control uh, this our loads use manually using the keypad here. Uh, of which we, my, my colleague will demonstrate to you. Okay. Our lo load one is switched on with the, this, the number zero and is switched off here. The other load is switched off here, this load. Here, the second load. And to switch on this load, you have to press letter four. Okay. Each and every different load has its number that switches it on or off. Yeah, the same thing applies to the alphabets. This basically represents um, different circuit breakers in the house. Yeah, so you can switch them off remotely using your mobile, or you can just switch off. This for mobile is we use it in case you forgot to switch off the geezer when you went when you go for work or yeah. The Faculty of Engineering and Technology at Beust is poised to be the pace setter in engineering education in the South African sub-region in particular and to be ranked among the best in the world in general. Join Buist through the Faculty of Engineering as they continuously push the boundaries of engineering to ensure a better society for humanity.